today's topic is titled self-care fill your cup i am one of your hosts renata and i am your other host fatima and welcome back it's crazy to think that we're already on episode 11. i know i figured that not that we started in the summer but i was just telling somebody the other day i'm like the summer is almost over. Like what happened? Where did the time go? Which is probably why we're talking about self-care today. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because like you said, the summer is almost over and it's like, wait, there was summer? There was a summer. Yeah, there's a summer. That little thing called summer. <laughs> well, self-care. Let's open the door to this conversation. You know, I will tell you in the last maybe year, I have come to have a different perspective about what self-care is. And I have sometimes, I know we've titled this episode self-care, but I have come to call it care for self. Mm. And I'll tell you why, because I had a client a few years ago. Well, I worked with them for a few years. I think we graduated um, early part of this year. But anywho, I remember them, you know, had, having a challenge with that word. And I'm like, well, why? What is it about self-care? And of course, we talked a little bit about like their own, you know, I'm going to say ideology around, you know, you being the focus. And so that's what made me start to call it, well, okay, if, if you're getting hung up on that word, let's just turn it around and call it caring for yourself. How do you do that? You know, so care for yourself, self-care, whatever you want to call it. What is it? And why is it important? You know, what I find interesting is why it's so hard to think about caring for yourself or okay. self-care. That's a good one. Why do, why do we, especially those of us that are used to giving and doing and going for everyone else but ourselves, right? Um, why do we feel as though it's being selfish because we take a moment for ourselves? Like, you know what? I just need a breather. I just need to go get a tea. I just need to go get a coffee. I just need nobody to talk to me. I just need to just be with me and just be. Right. And- but when we do that, we feel as though we're being selfish with our time mm-hmm. and with our deeds and with our actions. When in all honesty, if we look at those around us, they're clearly taking care of themselves while we're running around like a chicken with our head cut off for them. So that is an interesting question of what is self-care or caring for self. For me, I think it involves just that, just taking a moment to just be, Mm -hmm. just taking a moment to reground yourself, to figure out where it is that you're going, what it is that you want to do, what it is that fulfills you versus what fulfills others. And that can look so different in so many different ways. It can be journaling, it can be reading, it can be taking a walk, it can be prayer, it can be, you know, just, again, just being and doing nothing, being still. Mm -hmm. Almost like the Bible verse, be still and know that I am God. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like, just be still. And taking it away from the trend, as you said earlier, of going to get a massage, going to, you know, Mm -hmm. um, girls day out. While those things are good, you're still involving so many other people that are you truly focusing on yourself? That part. Now, that's a good point. You got so many other things going on that, you know, are you, (laughs) are you really caring for yourself? (laughs) Are you just hanging out with other people? Mm, that part. You know, I think that when you mentioned, you started to kind of mention like several things that, you know, like kind of people can do. I think we kind of get into that a little bit later too, but the subtitle, if you will, we decided to title it, fill your cup. And I think about that 
shout out to CC Winans, old school song. Yes. One of my favorites. It's like a two minute, a minute long, maybe. <laughs> and she just keeps repeating, fill my cup, you know, fill it up and make me whole. And that's the thing I think about when I think about caring for self or self-care is what am I doing or what can I do or what works for me that actually fills my cup, that actually causes me to feel and be whole? Like, what are the things for me? Like for me, for example, people get massages, but and do I get them? Sure, you know, you get tension in your neck, that kind of thing. And is that helpful to release? Absolutely. But I think about the fact that the day I do it is on a day that I choose not to see any clients. I choose not to take any consultations. Here's one, and I know some people may look at me sideways. I don't spend time with many people on that day, even my spouse. And it's got to be a special occasion for me to spend, I'm going to say it, take my kids out of school because <laughs> they may be in school. <laughs> well, this is before elementary is starting soon. Uh, what am I saying? It's me scheduling. Like mm. that piece for me is caring for myself and that I am unapologetic about my schedule. And I don't move a lot of things around. People are like, oh, you going back to work? You know, oh, you gonna do this today? Oh, you got anything on Thursday? Clients will ask me that sometimes. I'm like, no, I don't have any openings on Thursday. I'm so sorry. I'll see you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, <laughs> but not Thursday. Cause my schedule is important. And it's 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 interesting that you say that because I just had a session earlier today. And she was saying the same thing about how she, she's not motivated. You know, she wants to go walking. She loves to walk, but you know, things come up. And so she just doesn't go. And so I asked her that exact thing. I said, so what is it that makes everything else more important than you? Mm, and, that's a great question. and she was like, you know what, since you put it that way, she was like, maybe I need to put it into my schedule, my me time. So I need to write it on the calendar that this is what I'm going to do for me on this day. I said, absolutely. I said, and on top of that, set an alarm. If you usually go walking at eight o'clock in the morning, set your alarm for 7.30, 7.45. This is your me time. So it's, we have gotten life so busy and so used to doing for others that we forget to schedule for me, I said, and we actually literally have to schedule our time. So to your point of your schedule is important and that is important too, that we schedule that time for me to where it doesn't matter if it ain't God himself and it ain't an emergency, it don't <laughs> matter who it is. Uh, no, I can't do it. And that's just it. That's it. That's all. Right. So is that selfish to Ooh. have that? <laughs> well, I know that. <laughs> Y'all see how that just came out? Like, I just want y'all to understand that. No, that ain't selfish at all. But I'm going to let Renata finish her statement. I just have to. Oh, that's it. That's it. Yes, that's selfish. <laughs> okay, back to my natural response. No, ma'am. Not at all. And so we have to move away from allowing people to make us feel guilty about taking care of us because we are no longer being available for them and to them when they need us. Because if you go back and you think about it, you think about the many of people that you are there for, and then you can probably count on one hand and probably not even need the whole hand of how many people are there for you. Uh oh. So why would you allow someone else to make you feel guilty about taking time for yourself? If they don't fit into your schedule, you just tell them I'm not gonna be able to do it. And I had another client yesterday, I was telling her, she was like, but if I, I said, uh, we're going to remove the word, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to do it. She's <laughs> like, everyone's always dumping on me. I don't have the capacity for that right now. That's it. And she said, well, I'm going to try that. I said, they're not going to receive it well. However, it's about taking care of you and setting those boundaries 
and making sure that you're not overwhelmed. And that is another form of self-care. Stop allowing people to dump on you and in you. Because if you don't have the capacity to handle it, then you just say, you know what? Mm, I don't have the capacity for that right right now. Right. Boundaries, a form of self-care. Yes. I really do think that. You know, as you were talking, let me tell you what came to mind. I said, we have a challenge with letting people know what our capacity is, so to speak. And you may not necessarily use that that verbiage. I said, but most people, unless you live in the country, in, in the city, most people have what we call a privacy fence. Mm. And, and people do not have any problem erecting a privacy of friends around their property. As a matter of fact, let the fence start falling down. Even if they don't have the money, people will tack up something, put something there to hold it up. Because why? They don't want people coming into their yard unannounced, without permission, without asking. Without, well, that's permission, right? <laughs> like, you don't let just anybody come into your yard, right, in the city uh-huh. without permission. You're not just going to let anybody come into your house without ringing a doorbell or knocking on the door. Better yet, you might want to call before you come to my house. (laughs) And here's one to that. If you don't call first, guess what we're doing? Oh, I'm not even getting ready to go to the door. You're not getting any response. So So so, So if we do that, right? So if you are doing that to something external, like the house. Mm. What about you? Mm. Right? What about your heart and your mind? Why can't wow. you put on some, some, some boundary fences to protect yourself or to give yourself space rather? Because since we're talking about caring for self or self-care, what's wrong with you doing that? You know, when you use the word, you know, people want you to feel like cause you to feel guilty and want to make you feel guilty. I tell people, start asking yourself a different question. Instead of saying guilty, I say, get down to the bottom of that and ask yourself, what am I doing wrong, guilt? Because I'm choosing to take care of me in this moment. Because I'm choosing not to answer my phone and take a nap because I'm choosing to wash my hair and eat popcorn and watch a movie because I'm choosing to, you know, pray. I'm choosing to not answer and, and read my, my word. I'm, I'm choosing to draw, like whatever it is you choose to do because you just need to fill your cup. What is my mind? What's about that is wrong? What about that's wrong? But what if it's my mom? What if it's my grandmother that needs something? What if my sister needs something? What if my brother needs something? It's They're so used to me doing it. So what about that? Girl, I had this conversation with a couple people this week, and we talked about that. I said, well, what, what role have you played in their life? Right? They're used to coming to me. And here, and here's a tough question. I asked somebody this the other day. I said, here's a tough question. And I said, it's probably going to be hard for you to, to answer it, but it's equally hard for me to ask it because it kind of comes across a little rude. I'm just going to throw that out there first. I said, but what purpose does you being in that role of being all the things to everybody and not caring for you? I said, what purpose is that serving for you? Because it's serving a purpose or else you wouldn't do it. Mm. I like the way some most people will say because I feel good okay so you feel good or you get something from you being all the things to everybody else are you putting other people before you so here's a tougher question what does it mean if you stop doing that that's a good question right if you are no longer putting everybody else ahead of you and you're choosing to take some time for yourself does that mean that you're no longer going to feel good or that you won't ever right 
or that you like, what does that mean? So it's inter- that's an interesting point because your brother and I had that conversation one time and it, you, you know my life. <laughs> uh, and he was like, but he's like, but babe, some people like to feel needed and pe- some people want to feel needed. I said, it ain't me. That wasn't my calling. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, but you do this and you do that. I said, just because I do it don't mean that I like it. I said, it is excuse me, it is in me to be able to be that vessel and be that support for others that are going through based upon the humility and the humbleness that I have. I said, but to say that I like it, that ain't me. (laughs) So to your point of your client that you had when they said it makes them feel good, I won't necessarily say it makes me feel good. It ain't no <laughs> euphoria to do it. I'm like, look, call this person, call that person. Do, there's other people out there other than me. So that wasn't my calling. And it took him a minute to really understand that I don't do the things that I do because it makes me feel good. And 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 when I say that, don't get me wrong about that. I don't that it's not like I don't like being there for my family, my friends, so on and so forth. But when it's the consistency of your life Mm -hmm. and you have done it forever, and then you get into those modes where you do take a moment, like you said, you cut your phone off. Well, I called you, your phone was off. I was asleep. Like, (laughs) can I do that? (laughs) <laughs> just real quick can I take a shut eye uh, can I go take a shower can I do me for a minute mm-hmm. you know so that's where the, the importance of the self-care comes from like you said to your point of not feeling guilty about it or not being suckered into the manipulation right of feeling guilty and here's an even bigger manipulation that let's just be real our community does when we bring into the scripture, especially honor thy mother and thy father, hold on. That don't mean that I'm a slave to everything that you want me to do. Listen, And uh every time that you call me, every time that you think about me, every time that you whisper my name, I'm supposed to jump. Uh And I think that we fall into that. You are way in there. I can't. (laughs) Over there. You cannot just skip over it. You cannot. You can't just skip over it. As a matter of fact, hold on. I'm going to put a pause. We're going to take a quick break. Because we have got to come back to this. And we'll see y'all back here in like 0.5 seconds. Okay, we're back. I'm doing a rewind. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, so go back to what you said about manipulation. And how in our community, we are sometimes manipulated into, we not honoring people. We're not honoring our parents or our grandparents or whomever or the culture or whatever, because we choosing to say, hey, I got something else planned. Okay. I'm sorry. Listen, we love each other, y'all. We, it wasn't a cutoff. I just, I'm like, no, you just can't skip over that. <laughs> yes, it wasn't a cut off. I already knew where she was going with that. Was, it was like, hold on. And, and, and you're absolutely right because we are made to feel, you know, that's a whole nother one, but we are made to feel that, like you said, we're not honoring mm-hmm. our family members because we're not as accessible as they would mm-hmm. like us to be or here's what, as we used to be. And then when we come into ourselves and begin to realize, you know, I'm giving too much of me to everybody and everything else, I need to scale back. Okay, well now you weren't there when um, your dad needed you. You weren't there when your mom needed you. Oh, your grandmother needed you to do this. Okay, well, y'all did know that I was going to school or Mm -hmm. not even if I had something to do, I just told you I couldn't. Why was I wrong? Because I said I couldn't. I'm doing me. Uh-huh. You know, and then that's when the guilt trip comes. Well, I don't, I'm, you know, I won't ask you for anything else, or I don't ever ask anybody for anything else, or I don't want to be a burden. And then you know, here we go. That's manipulation, and that's not okay. 
I don't care what side of the coin it's coming from, who come, who it's coming from, what generation it's coming from. Mm. <laughs> you know, that's that's manipulation. That's not okay, and that's not healthy, right? Right. Do do we not get to do the things that replenish us? Here's the thing I like, right? When you think about when you fly, right? Most people have flown. Unless you're my father, J-Dub. Leave J-Dub alone. He not flying anywhere. <laughs> but everybody else on this planet outside of J-Dub, <laughs> right, has flown. And for the people who still care to hear about the safety measures that they talk about when you get on the aircraft and you sit down and fasten your seatbelt and while you taxi into the runway, right, off the run, wherever it is, right? They tell you to do what? When the oxygen mask falls out the sky, before you help somebody else, please put your oxygen mask on first. And I know some people think it's so rude and it's selfish, right? If your child is sitting next to you, and you're putting your mask on first before saving them? That's not why, right? No, you're not trying to let them perish. It ain't about self-preservation. Just like caring for yourself and taking care of you and doing whatever you need to do so you can keep going and maybe of support to other people is not about self-preservation. Now, are there people out there that's totally about themselves? Yeah. We say sometimes you can clearly see that behavior, but we're not talking about that today, right? It's not about self-preservation. At least I don't think so. It's about how can my three-year-old son or my five-year-old kid, my five-year-old daughter, help me? Mm. They've flown before, but they don't know anything about putting no mask on, right? <laughs> And here's one, they're probably frantic. What about the elderly person that's sitting next to you who can't even barely lift their arms up and have to get help coming onto the plane? It's not about mm -hmm. self-preservation all the time. It's about in order for you to be support and to your point, live out your calling. You got to have rest. You Your cup has to be full. You cannot pour from an empty cup. There's nothing coming out if you're not taking care of yourself. There is none, There are no contents in the cup if it's empty. <laughs> right? Right. I didn't have a note. That just came down from above, y'all. I'm just going to let you know. It did. There are no contents in the cup if it's empty. And so what you going to pour out to somebody else? So what is, what does, or how does the single mother that's tired, how does she find, or, or, or yeah, how does she find ways to care for herself without feeling as though she's neglecting her kids or she's not being a good mom or, you know, I, you know, that feeling, I got to be with my kids or, <clears throat> excuse me, that wife that may have the husband that doesn't do nothing. He just sit at home all day, watch TV, go to work, come home. That's all he do. Yeah. But, but, you know, she working, she cooking, she cleaning, she taking care of kids, she doing this, she doing that. But the minute that she may want to go do something, even if it's go sit at Starbucks to get out the house or walk around the park, how does she find her way of doing that? And vice versa, because I'm not going to slight our men. There are some men some, that mm -hmm. do do that as well. Take care of the home, take care of the kids. You know, How does any one person that is so used to giving to someone else, and not just one person, but to others, learn how to take care of self. That is such a good point. That is such a great point. And I'm going to tell you, as this is one thing. When people ask me, I just had lunch today with one of the, I would say, uh, 
mentors or seasoned women that has been a blessing to my life in the last year. So funny because I met her through my daughter. <laughs> but she always asked me how she can pray for me, right? Mm. It is probably the same thing all the time. <laughs> help, Lord, help me, help me understand how to balance it all. And I remember us having a conversation probably a few months back. And we talked a little bit about, you know, all the roles that people play in their life. And to your point, a single mom or a wife or a husband or, you know, maybe a sibling that's taking care of their siblings' kids, right? Whatever that case may be, be a grandparent or grandparents that are older, but they're taking care of younger kids for whatever reason. So how do you care for yourself when when the demands of daily tasks or daily life duties are feel overwhelming? And I'll tell you, I remember early on, transparency, I'm going to be open. I think I used to be a little bit resentful of my spouse who get to wake up and he go in his quiet time and he spent hours before the Lord, can't sing a lick. And, you know, if he ever listens to this, that's okay. But he be in there praising God and doing all the things. And, you know, I've been up all night long because the kid's sick or, you know, or I think I'm about to get up and, and praise the Lord. And, you know, in my quiet spot, here come one of the littles. <laughs> and I used to be so frustrated. And I remember, shout out to Sister Cassandra, her telling me, she said, God knew. Mm. Whoever it is that's out there listening to this, he knew that you would be in that position at that point in your life. He knew that. So it didn't catch him off guard. And she says, you know, she reminds, she said, every moment, it's not about how much time or what it looks like, or you got to have four or five hours. And I think that's for me where I had to get over. Self-care doesn't look like a whole afternoon. Right. It doesn't have right. to look like, you know, I got to go spend a day by myself or whatever. Sometimes it's you just having to either A, get creative with time or be okay with carving it out like we talk about scheduling or you know taking the moment when it comes i think for me oh, what yeah. i learned in some of the most quiet moments was before when my brother had come here one year like passing through they were pcs into another base and they stopped here and my son was like what nine ten months maybe or whatever <coughs> was he ten months excuse me Girl, whatever it was, your nephew wasn't sleeping. <laughs> he would cry every night. I mean, just, I don't know what it was. He was like, he, he still to this day, he a clean, like, and, and when I say clean girl, I don't mean he like, you know, mama's boy, because he, he alpha. And he going to go off and do his own thing and be his own person. <laughs> but he just, sometimes he just like a hug, right? So he sleep crying. And we was like, oh, no. My, my, and my brother was like, he said, maybe we just going to have to pray. I said, that's a great idea. We have been, but I don't know. I feel like God hear you. Maybe in, in desperation. <laughs> I ain't been praying the right thing. I don't know. Because I'm delirious. <laughs> but in those moments, circling back around, I started to appreciate the quiet time. Mm. Right? While God was working out his sleep schedule, I started to appreciate the wake up. And starting to look at that is like, you know what? I'm up. He's sleeping, I'm rocking him, nursing, whatever I'm doing. I'm just going to spend this quiet time just sitting, fill my cup, or ask mm. what I feel. And so what could that look like for the person that's listening and you find yourself feeling very depleted? You may have to find those moments where it's, right, it's not, um, can I say conventional? 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. It's not conventional where it's, it's, it's cookie cutter, pristine, you know, it's the same way every night or it's the same, you know, day every week. And you get to do that the same and it looks like that. No, no, that ain't, that, that ain't the reality of life. And I like that. Appreciate the quiet moments. Mm -hmm. And as you were talking, one thing that came to mind is, um, I think it's important, like you said, is the scheduling of it. Because when you think about, we get so off track with our finances because we fail to budget. That's true. And it may seem like, you know what, me scheduling this quiet time or me scheduling this 30 minutes, it's not going to really do anything. But if that is consistent, mm. then you are able to continually, consistently just feel and think about what it is that can fill your cup, right. what it is that you do need. You know, even if it's 10 minutes here, 30 minutes there, but you're scheduling that. And as you get more into it, it's like, okay, well, you know what? I can do this for 30 minutes now. I can do this for an hour and this is going to be my time. And again, that's just like with budgeting when it's like, oh, you know, I don't need to make a budget. I know this is this. But then when you see it written down and you start to go through that budgeting, you're like, it all begins to make sense. And right. then again, you have more money at the end of the month than you did before because now you're able to actually see it and implement right. it. So right, scheduling right. that time, you're able to implement and know that if to, to where the, to your point where you get excited about it. Like, you mm -hmm. know what? My time is coming up. I'm about to shut everybody else out and I'm about to do me if I don't do nothing but nothing. That's it. That's it. You know, my place is in the closet. Everybody in the house knows it's the closet and they, they yes. can't find me in the morning. They just come on in there. And I used to be like, oh, you know, singing out and praying, whatever I'm doing in, in my quiet time. And the kids just come on in there. Now they don't ask any questions. They just come and sit. Mm -hmm. Or they just cry. Or a buddy now, he'll say, but I didn't pray. <laughs> so, or he'll take out my little earbud and put one in his ear, you know. And I appreciate that because I'm like, it's it for me, it, it's an, it, it feels uninterrupted still. And I still feel like I'm getting that self-care moment because, you know, and that's, but they've learned. Yeah, she's in the closet. Doing what she do. <laughs> Sometimes she's just sitting. They don't come and in. She, and also, <laughs> it also teaches them. Mm hmm yeah you know, it teaches them to steal away yeah 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 yep yeah that's a good point that's a good point and so you know i think we one thing we wanted to cover was no i think we did why shouldn't you be you should you should be unapologetic about it because it's important right who wants to feel depleted? Because here's the thing, you your cup empty, then you walking around biting off everybody else's head. And they looking at you like you crazy. Right. And you just need some sleep. Like, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with him? I ain't got nothing left. I didn't gave it all to you. Now you asking me what's wrong with me. Right. You, you, you still want more from me and I have nothing left to give. Right. And so like you said, before it gets to that point, just take care of yourself. Just stop, take a moment. Like you said, enjoy the quiet moments, embrace right. them, right. and then learn to care for yourself. Here's one, more than you care for anyone else, because guess what? No one is going to take care of you better than you take care of yourself. No matter how well you take care of others, there still will not be one that takes care of you better than you take care of yourself. And an even better one is they're not going to tell you to take those times because they're so used to you giving at work, at home, at school, wherever, they're so used to you giving that they're not going to tell you to take a moment for yourself. Right. And let's be real. All that, it's great to give. It's great to be a giver. It really, truly is. Absolutely. But I don't know that it's healthy that you give to the point that you don't have anything. I don't know, right? And sometimes I question that because Jesus gave it all. He left it all. Look, he left it all on the, on the cross, on the field, as people say. He did, right? He did. 
But, uh-oh, watch out. He still filled his cup before he went. <laughs> he sure did. He sure did. And like, he made sure he was good and full before he went. He did. And so going back to your point, you have to make sure that your cup is full before you can pour into others. Yeah. Fill your cup. And make sure you eat, people. Stop walking around hangry. That's part of self-care. You know, I got delivered. So I'm trying to help somebody else. <laughs> I am. I just want to help somebody else. Get, get delivered. Go on to eat. Go on to take yes, you a nap. Please. Right? <laughs> yes. Please don't be like my father who always running around here talking about he can sleep when he died. No. He over that That's now because about a couple months ago, I called him. He told me he had to talk to me later because he was getting ready to take a nap. I said, pigs are flying. <laughs> if you are taking a nap, I know. Some, something is shifting in the world. <laughs> well, I told you, leave J-Dub alone. You know what? I'm going to leave us out with this. I remember I did a webinar and it was on racial trauma and it was mm. talking, talking about self-care. And one of the things that I took away from that webinar was realizing that people in our community, self-care may not always look like what everybody else does. Self-care may not always be the massage or the getting the hair and the nails done or the, you know, getting a pedicure or getting, you know, uh, it, it may not be that for you. Mm. And that opened my eyes, especially as a clinician, to the fact that culturally speaking, black and brown people, self-care could just look like getting a babysitter. Yes. Self-care could just look like, you know, I'm just going to eat different. Mm. self-care can look like it ain't you know it could literally just be like this morning i'm like oh schedule change Uh oh it wasn't on there she gonna work out this morning she not calling anybody she not gonna call her husband i'm gonna mm. focus on me right now that's self-care and it may not look like what everybody else is saying in in the electronic magazine or the tiktok video or the you know, whatever it may be, just know self-care is really about what's going to fill your cup. And that may very well look different than the next person or, you know, what you see on social media. I couldn't agree more. And like you said, to emphasize that that is the most important thing is that it doesn't look like what's for you is for you it doesn't look like what it is for everybody else and 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 that's okay i think that's another thing we have to get used to is it's okay it's okay it really is okay don't get so hung up on other people's reaction to your mm -hmm. new lifestyle or your boundary setting or you taking care of yourself oh yeah that people don't always have a reaction because some different a lot of Absolutely. people, it, it, it take them a little moment to get used to change, but that's okay. That's all right. They'll be okay. They will be, be all right. Be consistent with their change. What did they say? Twenty-one days uh, for uh, for a habit to mm -hmm. become natural. Get them twenty-one days of I don't have the capacity. I just that's can't it. do it. That's it. Or twenty-one times. What do you ever come first? <laughs> Whichever one come first. I just, I ain't going to be able to do it. That's it. It's and love. Say it in love. It, it's in love. Say it in love, right? Say it in, in love. love. And, and and if you want to even be more loving, share maybe a couple times when you do have the space. Because I do that. Oh, yes. you a Thursday? No, I don't. I don't have Thursday. I don't got to tell everybody why they can't see me on Thursday, hang out on Thursday. And I'm not making no exceptions. Uh, I just say, no, I don't. But. I do have this day, this day, this day, or this time, and these times, and any one of them times work for you, I'll gladly see you, <laughs> or I'll gladly call you back, or hang out. That part. Yeah, I'm not going to spin all them plates in this season in my no. life, and neither should I you. used to, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to be able to do it. It's not healthy. At all. It's honoring. Mm. It's not selfish. Mm. 
self-care it, it really isn't any of these things and my self-care is is really priority my quiet time you know eating the way i like the way i eat <laughs> you know yep. a good workout uh sometimes a nap on my self-care day <laughs> you know like stuff like that read a good book yep you know things like that so i we hope that this was this was a, a helpful i feel like it i learned a lot in this combo I did too. I always want to learn a lot, which is one thing that as a testament to you, to our friendship and to our conversations, yeah. it can be something that we talked about before, but then we're always some, something's going to be new that we didn't think about. And, and so, like you said, I hope that there were things that were said uh, that resonated with others mm -hmm. uh, and the importance of taking care of self. Yeah. Yeah. I do too. And with that being said, we hope that you decide to find some time <laughs> to take care of yourself. Maybe what we can do is link. I don't know. Do I have any resources? If we do, maybe we can link some down below. <laughs> and yeah, maybe, we yeah, we can do. Yeah, I think we can find some. Yeah. And if we don't, guess what? You can always see your local therapist. <laughs> Because they'll usually have a ton of them. Yeah. Absolutely. Or Google. That too. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. We absolutely appreciate you tuning in and your continued support in joining us on Open Door Conversations. If you have questions, concerns, or like to comment, or you want to offer up some episode ideas that are in line with hit us up on social media 